Check out G2A.com for cheap CD keys and everything else that you can find. They sell CSGO skins and everything. I mean, look at this. GTA 5 for $38. And you can buy 14 day trial codes for $1.93. But check the link in the description below to find out more. Hey guys, what's going on? And I got recommended this game by some kid at school. <laughs> He's like, play this game! It's about depression quest, and like, why? His music sounds so sad. So, it's just. The game uses audio as part of the play experience, but we encourage you to play with your sound on. Even if you don't want to. It's depressing as fuck. It's an early Monday morning. You're a mid 20s human being. You receive. You have a significant other named Alex who you're rather fond of that you would have been seeing executives for the past few months. The rest of your social circle consists of a variety of friends and acquaintances, some of whom you meet at a daily job, which is a little boring, but pays the rent. You like doing, you like to be doing more with your life as would your parents, but you're still in the process of figuring it out, and that's and what that means is hard to is how to go about it. You are dealing with motivation issues, so. You feel like this is probably your fault, and on bad days you can feel inwardly angry and down on yourself for being lazy, not quite sure how you can break out of it, how other people deal with things that seem to be very functional. You spend a lot of nights fixating on things like this, but never seem to do anything about it than lose sleep. Okay, so, let's see the one day morning. You spend the past several hours of working. The past week, you found your job motivation flagging it. As you walk along the streets, hits from the recent rainfall. You know that your significant other will be in, in classes until late. Another couple hours, at least, you briefly consider using this serendipitous solution to catch up on the project you've been working on casually for the past few months. As you walk, as soon as you think about the work that awaits you at home, you can feel the panic creeping up on in the back of your brain. Un Bitten, as you can think about how incredibly far you are behind and the amount of work seems nothing less than insufferable. Do you... Man, I'd rather order food, grab a drink, and hunker down on a night of work. Or reluctantly sit down at your desk and try to make yourself do something. Turn the TV on telling yourself you just need a quick half hour to home away from work. Crawl in bed, you're so stressed and overwhelmed you can possibly accomplish anything. You're depressed, interaction is exhausting, you're becoming more and more withdrawn. Not currently taking medication for depression. Man, I turned the TV on. It's just half hour, so. Crawl in bed. Okay, so that's the first one. Just half an hour of TV. You tell yourself, as some my leg grasping each other about it, so you don't want to sit down as you sink into it. You turn on the TV and start going through the usual channel routine. After a few cycles, you realize you're really not going to do much more than thumb calisthenics and absolutely killing time. You check the clock and see it's over 20 minutes already and it's passed. You sit down. There we go. As you sat down. So, next. It's a mid-Friday afternoon. Ooh, Friday. Alex calls you from one of her classes that telling you that she's going to be there's going to be a really awesome birthday party tonight at her apartment for one of her roommates is throwing. You've hung out with this roommate a few times with Alex. You get w along well enough, but aren't particularly close. You don't have work in the morning, there's nothing else particularly to do tonight. You are feeling kind of run down, but you have been fatigued most of the time lately. You mentioned that you're feeling ill because you're not sure how to explain those feelings to someone else. And say that you aren't sure that you can make it tonight. There's a sound of silence over your phone, but you can swear but you can swear you hear the sound of your partner's face fall. She tries to convince you anyway, but you haven't you haven't seen her this week and sounds pretty intent on you coming over. She isn't she does even draw a few suggestive worded hints that you can stay over with them tonight after the party. What do you do? Shake off the fuck and go have a good time with your girlfriend? Agree to go, say that you're just really not feeling it. Man, I'd go at number one. Hell, just agree to go then. You agree to go, even though you're really not feeling social. You 
know it's important to Alex. You really like to see her. She's seeing her does make you feel better sometimes. And you do hope that the case tonight does even more dealing. The time rolls around and you grab your overnight bag. Alex's apartment is a short walk away. And there are already people hanging out on the porch. You feel your chest tighten as you approach the building. And try to steal your nerves. You quickly find your partner chatting away with the birthday girl. And Alex immediately lightens up when she sees you. I'm so happy you came. I wasn't sure if you were going to make it. A young man taps her on the shoulder and she turns around. She turns back to you and apologized and let you know that they have to do something after the party. Alex has Alex hands you a beer and plans to kiss on your cheek before before going out to deal whatever came up. Enthusiastically self socialize. Awkwardly stand in the same spot, unsure of what else to do. Put your bag in Alex's room and avoid the crowd in there for a little while. Cling to the wall cling to the back wall, sip your beer and wait for your girlfriend to return. Proceed to drink in earnest, hopefully it makes you feel less uncomfortable. You are you're very depressed. You are at a large amount. You spend a large amount of time sleeping in yourself and having very little energy. You're not currently seeing first. You're not taking medication. What is this game? Oh my god. Like... The, number two is honestly me. As Alex leaves you with a beard, you're unsure of what to do yourself. Everyone at the house has sectioned off into smaller groups of people who knew each other who knew each other, and you feel like it might be too rude to butt in on any one of their conversations. As you're looking around, you can tell that you really don't know anyone else at this party. What the hell is going on? Oh, okay. Sorry. It's my Xbox controller. The birthday girl turns... Oh my god, Xbox. At this party, the birthday girl returns and thanks you for coming and chat with her. When you chat with her for a little until she approached by other friends, she introduces you to them. You have very little things in common with them and they have seemed to know each other for a very long time. We're still friendly. I'll be a little drunk and you ask your life to do the best to include you. You actually start to relax a little, slightly, but feel slightly excluded when you're a little only one. And inside joke is someone's professor. You proceed to make a small talk with that group and your, and your girlfriend returns. At the end of the night, you're half falling asleep with Alice. She thanks you again for coming half drunk. She confesses she thought you were going to flake out and unpleasantly surprised me in managed game. She says it lovingly, but you're not too quite sure how you feel about this statement. So, how long is this even? Claiming loudly that she doesn't see you enough and she's decided to invite herself over. As you converse, she talks. She walks around your place to get a di distinct impression on your being inspected. So, what are you going on? what's going on lately? She asks abruptly, taken somewhat aback by her left fielder. You know, you're not sure what she means. She reads the question and asks. Seemingly yourself lately, she gestures to the dirty piled sink and the notes on the fact you haven't called her visit in a while. Your resentment seems to spur on more. She presses you, asking if you're having problems at work or with Alex. And you're beginning to feel increasingly battered by this sudden, well meaning, but overwhelming inquisition. Under her questions, you become increasingly uncomfortable and want to be able to explain to her how you've been feeling, but the truth is, you're really not sure of yourself. Nothing horrific had happened at work or with your significant other, or friends or anything like that, but all you can really can't deny that you just felt drained, and though you're really not here. You wish you could tell your mother all these things, and she hasn't been approachable or negative about emotions in the past. She is a kind person who holds the opinion to the solution of problems. It is to try harder and maintain a positive attitude, a stance on reheared head in the past conversations. You've begun to explore the subject with her... You know it's slightly, she's unlikely to be understanding and you know the energy it was right now. You imagine what would happen if you managed to burn out everything you felt. What do you do? Man, if it was me, I would let like my parents know. I try to be honest, honestly, that's how it would work. You attempt to tell your mother how you're feeling and despite initial misgivings you have about doing so, find the right words and how you're feeling, like trying to entangle Christmas lights, searching for the dead bulb in a cluttered mess. She watches you intently and abidedly sighs before you can clearly articulate anything. Else. 
unfortunately, she reacts predictably. An attitude like that won't get you anywhere. You need to work harder at getting what you want instead of sitting around here feeling sad about it. Nothing will good. Ha nothing good will happen unless you make it happen. That's true. Though. You gotta work towards what you want in life. She isn't angry or spiteful. She just tells you this. Try to explain that it's not a matter of that, but you could tell you're not getting anywhere. The frustration chokes the words in your throat, and you give up on the pushing subject further. She's no. You know what she's getting you the advice that makes sense to her. And generally wants the best for you, but however she doesn't understand that it's not as simple as somehow deciding to be positive or work harder. It's those things that aren't visible or viable options on your feeling. You accept defeat and conversation shifts on other subject. She leaves you childing after a call to call her more often, take better care of yourself. You sigh heavily as you, the door closes behind her. Spend the next few hours laying in bed staring up at the ceiling. Lazy Sunday morning, so so paraphrases. A co-worker came up to you. How do you feel about cats? Yes, mine had kittens a few weeks, and I'm having an awfully hard time finding home for the last one of the litter. You don't have any pets, right? And talks about the idea of taking the last kitten off his hands. She's a real sweetheart, really loves people. She's got all her shots already taken care of, and the vet says she's healthy as a horse. I can bring her by your place tonight if you're interested. If you look around your apartment, try to picture a cat as he continues to tell you how cute she is. And then you d really don't have anything for a kid to set up there. Oh, don't worry about that. I can bring over a litter box and food. Since you'd be really helping me out, I'll be fixed. That's the least I can do. I just don't want to put her in a shelter. You can't feel like... You can't help to feel like you're being guilt tripped, but you have to decide to give it some serious consideration. It does get awfully lonely around your apartment, and it might feel less empty with the cat around. However, since you've been feeling so down, it might not be a good idea to take the responsibility of even a cat if they're fairly low maintenance. Uh, take cat knowing... I can't even pick those. Hell yeah, I'll be a cat owner. You accept the offer. Uh, she doesn't carry over really sorrowful cows enough to start worrying like it doesn't like you. Hmm. How long is this game even, honestly? It's a late Friday afternoon. And quitting time is just around the corner. At the end of your shift, you get a call from Alex. It seems like your group of mutual friends is heading out nearby. A nearby pub for dinner and drinks to celebrate the end of the week. And they want to know if you would want to come along. You can only really tell her that you're emotionally exhausted from the work week and a social outing. A couple hours later, two of your, two of you, oh, so you went with Alex. A couple hours, two of you find yourselves in a familiar position on the couch, watching comedy shows on Netflix with a box of pizza open, the coffee table in front of you. you look across the couch at her. You feel anxious. You feel bad about enforcing the two of you to stay home tonight. Again, well, you are always appreciative of your partner's efforts to take your feelings into account and help the socially comfortable. Well, she does seem to enjoy spending time with you, as the two of you sit in comfortable, almost contented silence watching old TV shows you've seen two or three times before. Your increasing fear that your relationship is becoming one-sided weights weighs more than heavily on you. You feel like you're even a burden or a war to her, and... It's vitally impossible that you see that you could possibly offer her in return. Worst of all, nagging fears have made you more self-conscious than ever, which all ever inwards and decide to pull away, pull away even from Alex herself. What do you do? Ask Alex if she's happy with your relationship. Don't say anything, or you're, don't say anything you're already worried about. Uh, I'd ask honestly. You look over at Alex, who hasn't noticed and noticed you watching her yet. And you try to parse the expression on her face, worrying with sheer boredom and bare tolerance. You wonder if she's thinking about all the fun things she could have been doing tonight and she wasn't trapped on the couch with you. Ordering some of the three takeout places you always order from, a sense of disappointment creeps over you as you picture what the night could have been if you just had accepted the invitation. I know this is pretty boring Friday night for you. Are you happy being with me, being like this? She turns to you, forehead and goes, Why do you ask me that so often? You f feel her body stiffen and pull away a little from her. Well, I mean, you start 
but are, are unable to try to think of how to answer. I don't know, it's not what you usually be up to, I don't know. I guess I'm getting kind of worried you're bored sometimes, never mind, um, I know it's not what you probably be up to. Alex Rines, what do you mean by that? I just mean usually going out and doing things, partying and stuff, you know? She sighs and falls against the couch. It's not like I want to do those things all the time. I like nights too, just like everyone else. She turns to you, frustration wearing on her face. Sometimes I swear it feels like you don't know me at all. It's not just that I just, your voice trails off. And I notice she has exasperated look on her face. You have seen once or twice, doubting the insecurities, re-seeking reassurance. She sighs again, this time louder, turning towards the flickering skein. Screen, I like spending time with you, okay? If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. <sighs> you are deeply depressed, and even activities for you used to enjoy a whole little to no interest for you. And you exist on near constant state of... What? I can't even read it. It's a breezy Sunday afternoon. You allowed Amanda, an old friend, to come... You allowed Amanda, an old friend from town that is... In Old friend from school that is in town for the weekend to talk to you about leaving the house for coffee and catch up. You meet her in a small cafe and talk about what you've been up to since you last seen each other. And you can't feel that you felt a lot more accomplished and interesting than you are while talking to them about school. When you get a turn brief to your activities, you feel anxious and ashamed and very abbreviated version. When you talk about your job as little as possible and feel incredibly boring as you describe it despite her expressing sincere interest in your life. Amanda has known you long enough to read your mood and tone of voice. She leans to ask you a question, gently touching your hand and a look of concern on her face. What wrong? What's <laughs> what wrong? What's wrong? Do you insist nothing is wrong, Chase starts that notice your hands are shaking, definitely asked what she means by that. Definitely asked. Do you think something's wrong with me? You start to feel insecure and realization creeps over you. Amanda pulls away and apologizes for you. Oh no, I didn't mean anything by that. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. You apologize as well. God damn. This is so sad. Why? Lately, you've developed a nasty bit of waking up 10 to 20 minutes before your alarm rings. Unfortunately, today is no exception. You lay in bed, each minute ticking closer, wake up time passing on the swelling wave of ever, ever reaching dead. Dread. Sooner you, than you like, your alarm blares and inevitably, inevitably you frantic pound these, these button retreat under your blankets as the warmth of your comforter can shield you from the past of time. Same. You almost always have difficulty rising from bed, me. But today, that task seems nothing short of her Herculean. Herculean. And after several snooze cycles, you decide just you can't deal with work today. You're incapable of even rousing yourself from bed a lot, let alone going to work and having to force yourself through a work day. Not even to mention you snoozed you so many times it'd be impossible to make it on time now. Call your boss, tell him, Dick. In spite of the fact that you know it's your job, you should go. You keep finding yourself every step of the way. You just have to climb out of bed and just go. Your body seems to get heavier and foggier. You find yourself unable to make yourself move. You grab your phone, dial your boss's number. Hopefully, it's early enough that he won't be there. You can just leave a message. Fortunately, after a couple of rings, the voicemail picks up. After you leave your message explaining you're sick and won't be able to come in today, as you hang up the phone, don't worry, perhaps the message sounds like a lame excuse. When you wake up the next morning, you're sort of feeling well rested, and you actually feel more stressed out. While it was definitely nice to get a break from work, now you're faced with a new problem you have to consider. You have to go to work today, and you aren't having the same problem physically of getting out of bed you were having yesterday. The prospect of having to face your boss after missing a day at work doesn't seem really impressive. You worry that your absence won't be as believable or legitimate that your co-workers and boss will think. Have asked to leave, playing hooky, or worse, feel that someone will actually ask you what's wrong, being caught in that instance. You're profoundly depressed, you're barely functional on days you can't even get out of bed at all. Dude, this game is so sad, oh my god. 
Go to your computer, sleep is clearly not happening. Me. Dude, how long is this game? Thrown out, out, what are you kidding? Hey, it says I'm seeing a therapist. Oh, it said I'm seeing a therapist. Don't burden anyone with problems, distract yourself. Your motivation levels are non existent. You alternate between feeling totally apathetic and panicking about things out of control in your life. You lack energy to do more than sleep days away, yet you constantly feel as worthless as prevent you from getting any actual rest. You feel like dying. But ironically, too trying to actually get on these feelings, dude. What the hell? I don't even know how long this game is. Excuse yourself in the bathroom. Tell um, so you're not in the mood. Turn on the TV. Let your mind go blank. What is this game? Try to regain your focus and don't answer. Finally depressed you barely. Oh, it changed. Um, go somewhere. Oh my god, this game is so depressing, guys. What the hell? It's a cold Saturday afternoon. You've arrived at Alex's apartment. Finally happy to see her after a week of absence due to your schedule's not lining up due to work and school. Um, ask her to move in. This, oh, this is a, well, there's no doubt depression is a battle and seems to have taken a particular toll on you. As the days go by, you find yourself having to fight harder and harder just to keep yourself moving. Pouring events in the past, exhausting. You still have to clear your throat and awkwardly try to exchange the subject. We really thank you for taking time to play depression, <laughs> depression quest. We realize it may not be the most enjoyable game ever played or even the easiest we sincerely appreciate your involvement like depression itself depression quest is, does not have an end there's no neat resolution to depression and it was important to us that depression quest's own resolution reflect instead of a tidy ending we just want to provide a series of outlooks to take moving to take moving forward after all all we can really do with depression is just keep moving forward. At the end of the day, it's our outlook, and support from people like you just makes the world a difference. Thanks again. Well, that, even though I skipped through a lot of it, still, God, it's, it's, it tells a good story, though, honestly. I'm sorry. But, yes, this music is, like, really depressing. But, if you look at it, like, if you've ever been depressed or something like that, I mean, you, all you gotta do is keep moving forward with your life. You gotta think on the happy, you gotta think happy thoughts. You gotta think good thoughts to get you happy. I mean, I'm thankful for, like, my friends, my family, my girlfriend, everything. I'm thankful for the people I go to school with, actually. I'm thankful for the people in the band that are basically my family. I love all of them. You gotta keep moving forward in your life, honestly. It's the best thing you can do. Take your mind off the negative things in life. You got to keep moving forward. I guess this is the end of this video. This is Fragged signing off. Take care of yourself. Keep your tongue off windows. Peace out.